Hey, how you doing? Welcome to 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. So I got a part of a Bible passage to read to you and a couple of thoughts to hopefully encourage you. This is from Luke 5, uh, starting at verse 1. It was t- uh, talking about Jesus. It says, One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowded around him uh, and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, who uh, the Simon Peter, Jesus renamed him Peter, so I'll just call him Peter because it's easy. Uh, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore, and then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So you kind of see what's happening here. Um, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered him, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. Fishermen call that getting skunked. We got skunked. Uh, But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they both began to sink. When Simon saw this, he fell uh, at Jesus' knee and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that that had been taken. Uh, And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. And then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, for from now on you will catch men. And they pulled up the boats on the shore. They left everything and followed him. I think this is an amazing story. When you think about Peter... When you think about Peter, he uh, up to this point he was a middle-aged businessman, um, not not real young, just a uh, just kind of a local homegrown guy, not particular particularly educated, um, but his life is about to change monumentally forever. These next thirty minutes are about to change his life forever. When you think about it. There are cities with millions of people that have been named after Peter. Millions of parents have named their children after Peter. Peter was the one who, uh, he was there at every major event in Jesus' ministry. He was there when Jesus died on the cross. He was there uh, at the empty tomb. He was there on the day of Pentecost. He, uh, he, was, he was there when uh, he got this vision, when God told him, hey, it's okay to take the gospel to the Gentiles. And so... Peter's life changed monumentally from being a fisherman to being this fisher of men. Uh, and Jesus had asked uh, Peter at this point two things. And Peter pretty much answered with a, if I put it in vernacular today, he pretty much answered with, okay. The first one was, can I use your boat? Just push it out from the shore. Because Jesus was standing at the edge of the water. He's getting pushed back. Any minute now, he's going to be standing waist deep in water trying to preach from there. So he got in the boat, asked, you know, can I do this? Yes, that's okay. They push him back and he's able to preach. The second thing that Jesus asked him to do was uh, to go out, put his nets out and and, uh, for a catch of fish. And Peter is like, wait a minute, you're a carpenter. I'm a fisherman. If I'm going to build a boat, I'm going to see you. I'm going to come and see you, and you build me a boat. If I'm going to catch fish, then I'm your guy. So, um, but then he says, essentially he says, but because it's you, I'll do it. Okay. I love the fact that Peter's response was okay. If I were Jesus, I'd be looking for someone who was sitting in the front row of the of this meeting, uh, listening with rapt attention to everything that that Jesus was saying. But Peter wasn't that guy. Peter was, Peter was, he wasn't even there for the sermon. Think about that. He was a little way down the beach, just fixing up his nets. He wasn't even, he wasn't even all that interested. And Jesus actually got in Peter's space and said, "Hey, I need you to." I think Jesus must have had a bit of a twinkle in his eye and a bit of a smile on his lips as as he's doing this, because he goes, "You have no idea how much your life is going to change." Um, and the rest is simply history. From the time that Peter said, okay, and okay, everything changed. Um, in the kingdom of God, sometimes 
All the great moments are built on someone who just says, okay, I will. Um, okay means that I'll do it, um, even if it doesn't seem to matter all that much, even if it doesn't make much sense, like it did with the fish, um, even if your arms are tired, your shoulders are tired, and your back is sore, okay. Even if it's not convenient, just finish cleaning all the nets. I was just about to go home. It's not really convenient, but okay. Even if I'm already doing something else, um, or even if it's not really what I feel like doing right now, okay. Um, and it's okay because of who's asking. If Jesus is, is asking you to say okay is a very powerful thing. It may change history. So can I pray for you today? Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we have a chance to serve you, that you have a, a purpose and a destiny for each of our lives and has been worked out today. So today, uh, as we as we, we go through this day, tomorrow, as we go through the day, well, we just commit to you to say, because it's you who's asking, we'll say, okay, we'll serve you. And uh, we'll just enjoy whatever it is that you bring, whatever it is that you make of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen.